Hey guys, how are you? I have another coding interview problem that I want to share with you guys. Here's the problem. You have a staircase with n steps. So let's just say you have a staircase and it has n number of steps here. You may take one or two steps at a time to climb the stairs. So let's just say you have three stairs. In order to get up these stairs, you have to take either one or two steps to make your way to the top of this staircase. So, the first way to make your way up these stairs are to take one step at a time, in which you will go one, two, three. One step, one step, one step. That will be one combination. Another way of making your way up these stairs would be to take two steps first and then one step to make your way to the top of these stairs. And another way to make your way up these stairs would be to take one step first and then take two steps in order to get to the top of these stairs, which would ultimately result in three ways or three combinations to making your way up this staircase. Write a method to find the total number of combinations to climb the staircase. So, when I was looking at this, I know I had to consider two things. I had to take note of the base case, and I also had to create a formula that would calculate the total number of combinations to make my way up this staircase. So, the first thing I considered was the base case. If n, which is equivalent to the number of stairs, is less than or equal to 2, then I want to return n. So this basically means that if there's only one stair, there is only one way up that stair, which is one step. You could not take two steps because simply it's just one step. If there are two steps, there are two ways to reach the top of the staircase. One step at a time or two steps at a time. Another thing I consider it was the formula. So the formula would be equal to, so, so, so basically when I'm creating the formula, I wanted a formula that would account for if n is greater than two, if there are more than two steps. And it turned out that in order to calculate the combination of the total number of ways that you can get to the top of n steps, I had to take the sum of the previous two steps in order to come up with that combination. So this is the formula here. Steps n minus 1 plus steps n minus 2. And I have an example down here. Let's just say n is equal to 3. So what I want to do is just pass 3 until into n here. So 3 minus 1 plus 3 minus 2. You get 2 plus 1, which will be equal to 3 ways up the stairs. So to make this a little bit clear, let's start coding. So the first thing I wanted to do was to create a function. I want this function to return a number. Now, and I'm going to name this function calculate step ways. So basically number of ways that you can reach the top of a staircase. Another thing I want to do is actually add a parameter value here. This parameter value is just going to take the number of steps that are passed in. So the first thing I want to do is handle this base case. So the first thing I want to write is if n is lesser than or equal to 2, then I want to return in. So basically what's happening here is if the number, as I explained before in the presentation, is lesser than or equal to 2, I want to return n. If n is equal to 1, I want to return 1 because there's only one stair. If it's equal to 2, I want to return 2 because you can make your way up the steps one way with just one step at a time or two steps at a time. Now another thing I want to do is add this else clause down here. 
and this else clause is simply going to return the method let's go back here is gonna return this formula that I've created here n minus 1 plus n minus 2 so calculate step ways n minus 1 plus calculate step ways n minus 2 and that's pretty much it as far as the function goes the only thing I need to do now is go up to this main method and call the function I also want this value to be printed out to the console so I'm gonna do a sys out calculate step ways and then I'm gonna pass in three now as we know as I explained before if I pass in three I'm supposed to get three steps so I should have three printed out to this console here then you save let's run the application we get three exactly what we were expecting now another thing I want to point out about this function is that it looks it, it looks kind of similar to the Fibonacci formula that I created in one of my earlier tutorials um, so another thing that we need to consider is the time complexity so the time complexity of this function is exponential exponential time complexity two raise to the end two raised to the end all right so during this interview they also asked me to create a function for better performance so basically the, a way of doing that as I said before is pretty similar to the Fibonacci sequence the only thing that really changes is this uh, this base case condition instead of returning one which I've done in the Fibonacci formula uh, I'm just returning in now so I'm gonna create a new function a non-recursive function that calculates the number of ways you can make your way up these steps so I'm gonna start off with public static int calculate step ways and I'm gonna name this non-recursive and this function is also gonna take in a number int n it's pretty much and also for the base case we're gonna set it up the same way we set it up up here so if n is lesser than or equal to 2 then I'm gonna return n what I want to do now is create three variables int first equals one int second equals two int nth equals three after this well not three actually this is actually going to be two my bad so I then want to create myself a for loop four int i equals three now the, the reason we're starting at three I, exp I explained this in a previous tutorial but the reason I'm starting at three is because I've already handled the case for two here and then I want to go i is lesser than or equal to n and i plus plus All right, so the first thing I want to do is write nth equals first plus second. First equals second, and second equals nth. Then simply at the end, I just want to return nth. 
and this and this is it as you notice with this for loop down here time complexity is O of n which is a better time complexity than the exponential one that we have up here so what I'm gonna do when I'm what I'm gonna do now is call this function and I'm passing in the same value here I save it if I run it again I should get the same number three see exactly what we we're looking for so that's pretty much it for solving this problem if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below um, make sure to also subscribe and like the video if you felt like you've learned something from this and until next time